Welcome to Electrical Circuit Analysis. Throughout this lecture, I'd like to request you to pause the video whenever you need it and keep pen and paper with you so that we can solve problems to consolidate our understanding. In this lecture, we're going to learn what mesh analysis is. So, just to remind you, a mesh is a loop which does not contain any other loop loops within it. In other words, uh, the meshes are the windows of the circuit. So in this circuit, for instance, this is a window and this is another window. So this circuit has two meshes. So first I'm going to outline the steps of mesh analysis and then we'll try to consolidate our understanding with an example. So the first step is to assign, is to identify the meshes and assign a mesh currents I1, I2, I3, etc. to all of the meshes. So in this circuit, for instance, I have two meshes. So I assigned a current I1 in this mesh, and I assigned another current in this mesh, I2. And it could be both clockwise or both anti-clockwise, but uh, it's always uh, helpful to follow the same thing for all problems, and also you cannot take clockwise direction in this mesh and anti-clockwise direction in this mesh. It has to be consistent within the same problem. I always take clockwise direction when I'm trying to apply KVL, so I'd like to urge you to do so as well. So the second step is to apply KVL in each of the end meshes. So we use Ohm's law to express the voltages in terms of the mesh currents. So if you don't know how to write KVL equations, Please check out my KVL video as well, KVL lecture as well, where I describe in detail how to write KVL. So we have two unknowns in this equation, so we need two equations. So we write one. So this mesh gives us one equation, and KVL in the second mesh gives us the second equation. So we solve the resulting L simultaneous equations to get the mesh currents I1 and I2 up to IN. So let's look at it with an example. In this circuit we have two meshes, this one and this one. So after identifying the meshes, we basically assign the mesh currents. So I'm assuming clockwise current I1 in this mesh and clockwise current I2 in this mesh. So here you see that there are some of the currents that are defined in the question I1, I2, I3, we'll just ignore that. We will assign mesh currents, we'll assign the variables in our own way. If there is any current defined in the question, we'll just ignore that. And if we have to determine I1, I2, I3 here, as defined in the question, we'll at first determine our defined currents, small i1 and small i2, and then express these three currents with respect to our currents to determine capital I1, capital I2, and capital I3. But we'll talk about it later. So let's write the KVL equations. So if we go clockwise, we see the negative terminal of this voltage source. So we write minus 15 here. We know across the resistor, we always have voltage drop. So it's 5I1. In this stain ohm resistor, we have two currents. The stain ohm resistor is in mesh 1 and also in mesh 2 which means I1 is going from bottom to top and I2 is going from excuse me, I1 is going from top to bottom in this direction and I2 is going from bottom to top so the resulting current in clockwise direction is I1 minus I2 that's why we write I1 minus I2 here and as we go clockwise, we see the plus terminal of this voltage source. That's why we write plus 10 is equal to 0. So each term here is a voltage across an element. In this mesh, we encountered 1, 2, 3, 4 elements, which is why there are four terms on the left-hand side of this KVL. 1, 2, 3, 4. Which represent, each of these terms represent the voltage of a particular element. Here I've assumed that the voltage drops are positive and voltage rises are negative. So 
So please pause this video and try to write the KVL for mesh of I2 and then we'll match your answers. So please pause. So hopefully you've been able to write this. So again we go clockwise, minus 10, and then we need the clockwise current that is the current that goes from bottom to top in this 10 ohm resistor. So the I2 goes from bottom to top and I1 goes from top to bottom in the opposite direction which is why the total current from bottom to top or clockwise direction here is I2 minus I1 that's why I write 10 I2 minus I1 here in this 6 ohm resistor we only th this I2 current flows and in this 4 ohm resistor the only current that flows is I2 that's why 6 I2 plus 4 I2 equals to 0 we have two unknown I1 and I2 and two equations we can solve this system of linear equations, equations to obtain the currents I1 and I2. In this way, uh, we solve a circuit using mesh analysis. So some important facts to consider for mesh analysis. The direction of the current could be clockwise or anti-clockwise, but it must be consistent throughout the same circuit. So in the same circuit, you cannot take clockwise in this mesh and anti-clockwise in the other mesh. I always suggest, again, I urge you to take, to always consider clockwise direction, to always consider clockwise direction. Mesh analysis is, is convenient and reduces the number of e equations that we need to solve. And mesh analysis is also known as mesh current analysis, loop analysis, or loop current analysis. So here's another example of mesh current analysis. So determine the current I0 using mesh current analysis. So please pause this video and then we'll match your answers. So hopefully you've been able to solve this problem. Here the meshes have been identified and the mesh currents are al already given, so we don't have to do the first step. So if we write KVO in the mesh of I1, we start from here and go to clockwise direction. And as we go clock to the clockwise direction, we see the negative terminal of this voltage source, so it's minus 24. And then we arrive at this 10 ohm resistor. We're going in this direction, that is top to bottom. So we need the top to bottom current. So I1 goes from top to bottom, but I2 here goes from bottom to top. In other words, minus I2 goes from top to bottom. So the total top to bottom current, or the total clockwise direction current through this 10 ohm resistor is 10 I1 minus I2. In a similar manner, the current that goes from top to bottom in this 12 ohm resistor is I1 minus I3. Okay, so our KVL accounts for all the all these three term three uh, elements, this one, this one, and this one, and we equate it to zero. Another easy way to remember is is that w when we have a resistor that it, that exists in multiple meshes, we first write the current of my mesh minus the current of the other mesh. See the current I1 comes first in this equation. We're trying to write the KVO for I1. Okay, please pause this video and write the KVO equations for I2 and I3, and then we'll match our answers. So hopefully you've been able to solve this. And uh, I not here is the current that goes from top to bottom, it's something that's defined in the question. We did not define these things. W we defined only I1, I2, and I3. We did not define I0 here, capital I0. So if you're trying to determine capital I0, we need to see what is the current that goes through this 10 ohm resistor top to bottom. So there are two currents that are going through this 10 ohm resistor, I1 from top to bottom and I2 from bottom to top. So I0 is equal to I1 minus I2. That's something that has to be replaced in this equation because we, we already have three variables i1, i2, and i3 we don't want another one because we only have three equations here we can only afford to have three variables so i0 in this equation is i1 minus i2 so here is another example so please pause and then we'll match your answers so please pause okay so hopefully you've been able to do this the meshes have been identified here, so you didn't, you didn't have to do that part. Here the current I0 is equal to I3. 
because this is the current I know this is the current that goes to the, to the six ohm resistor. The six ohm resistor only exists in the mesh of I3. So the same current I3 goes through flows through the six ohm resistor. Resistor. In other words, the magnitude and direction of I0 and I2 are exactly identical, which is why I0 is equal to I3. Did you notice that the problems we have solved so far never had any current sources? So the problems in mesh analysis can be of three types. Case 1, circuits with no current source. Case 2, current source existing in only one of the meshes, in only one mesh. And case 3 is current sources between two meshes, just like nodal analysis. So we've already seen how to solve class case 1. So moving forward, we'll discuss how to solve cases 2 and 3. So let's talk about case 2 first. So when a current source exists only in one mesh, we already know the current of the mesh. So for instance, here in mesh, mesh of I2, the current I2 is minus 5 ampere. This current source exists only in mesh, I, mesh of I2 or mesh 2. It's not in between these two meshes, so this is case 2. If this happens, if case 2 happens, we already know the current of this mesh. So I2 here is minus 5 ampere. Why minus 5 ampere? Why not 5 ampere? This is because we have assumed I2 is going, from, is going clockwise if we go clockwise in this branch, we go from bottom to top, but 5 ampere is going from, excuse me, if we go clockwise in this branch, we go from top to bottom, but 5 ampere is going from bottom to top. In other words, I2 is clockwise, 5 ampere is anti-clockwise. So it's opposite, I2 is the opposite current of, uh, of, of this 5 ampere, which is minus 5 ampere. Okay, so when a current source exists in only one mesh, it makes our job easier. We don't have to write KVL for this mesh. We can just give, write the KVL for this mesh and determine I1. We already know I2. Now, if current source exists between, between two meshes, meshes in between two meshes, just like this one, so this 6 ampere current source exists between uh, exists in both the mesh of I1 and mesh of I2, then what we do is that we create a super mesh by excluding the current source and any element connected in series with it. And just like uh, nodal analysis, we here create a, we assume that the current source and anything that is in series with this current source is gone. And we write one equation for both of the meshes. And we call this a super mesh. So how do we write the equation of KVL of super mesh. So here uh, I'll just imagine this current source and the resistor in series with this current source is gone. So the, the KVL of super mesh is minus 20 plus 6 I1 plus 10 I2 plus 4 I2 is equal to 0. So we're just imagining this current source and this resistor is gone. As we can see the currents are different I1 and I2 which indicates that it actually doesn't go away. I mean, we cannot just change the circuit like that. So we're just assuming or imagining that the current source in the resistor is gone. Now we have two unknowns in this equation, I1 and I2, and we only have one equation. How do we solve this? We cannot solve this with only KVL. So we need to KCL, we need to take KCL at this node or at this node. That is including the branch, which can contains the 6 ampere current source because we already know the current of this branch. So if we take KCL, we end up with the other equation after which we can uh, solve this systems of linear equations with two variables and determine the current. So that's how you solve problems uh, that is of case 3. In other words, circuits that contain a current source that exists in two meshes. So here's another problem. Let's pause this video and then we'll match your answers. So please pause. So hopefully we've been able to solve this. So we're, we'll imagine that this 3 ampere current source and this 1 ohm resistor does not exist and mesh will be, our mesh will consist of 
this 6 volt voltage source, this 2, amb 2 ohm resistor, this 4 ohm resistor, and this 8 ohm resistor. And we write the KVO of this mesh as usual. Now, we discussed nodal analysis in the earlier lecture. How do we choose between nodal and mesh analysis? So, if a circuit is given and you're free to use any method you want, and you're trying to choose between nodal and mesh analysis, what we do is that we count the number of non-reference nodes in that circuit, and we also count the number of meshes in that circuit. If the number of meshes is greater than the number of nodes, non-reference nodes, we use mesh analysis. Why? Because in nodal analysis, the number of non-reference nodes is equal to the number of unknowns, is equal to the number of equations. Similarly, in a mesh analysis, the number of meshes is equal to the number of unknown currents, which is equal to the number of equations we need to, to determine those unknown currents. So we take uh, whichever one is smaller for us actually there is a typo here it should be if number of meshes is less than number of nodes we use mesh analysis so whichever one is smaller because uh, in this circuit for instance if we use nodal analysis we have let's say we ground here so the number of non-reference nodes is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 so it will result in 5 unknowns and 5 equations but if we take mesh analysis, it, it will only need two equations and two unknowns to solve. So in this circuit, mesh analysis is much easier to do than nodal analysis. And it's a better choice than nodal analysis. So please ignore this typo here. It should be if number of mesh is less than number of nodes, use mesh analysis. Otherwise, use nodal analysis. So count the number of meshes and count the number of non-reference nodes and do the analysis whichever one is whichever one is smaller. Now when deciding also consider voltage sources between a node and a reference and current sources in mesh since they simplify the calculation. So if you can ground in a manner cleverly ground such that you know the voltage of this because if you ground here we already know this voltage. This voltage is 36 volt. That reduces an unknown voltage as opposed to if you ground here for instance we don't know this voltage. If we ground here, we have more unknowns than if we ground here. So if we, you can cleverly choose the ground such that uh, we can reduce the number of nodes in nodal analysis. So hopefully you have a clear idea on nodal analysis. Thank you for your time.